Welcome back to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. Before the break, we were covering game three between the Dallas Mavericks and the Minnesota Timberwolves. We are going to move on to game three between the Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. Before we do that, though, I do want to remind you that we do get questions and comments that come in during the show, um, and we would love to engage with those. If you want your question and comment to be seen and addressed on air, please go to gsmcpodcast.net. You can leave a tip or a donation that ensures that your question comment gets uh, to the top of the list and um, we are alerted so we see that and we can answer that question. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. Now we are moving on to Celtics versus Pacers in game three of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. The Celtics scripted an exhilarating narrative of resilience and triumph. Initially facing an imposing 18-point deficit midway through the third quarter, the Celtics found themselves in a precarious position. However, spurred on by the indomitable spirit of their players, particularly Drew Holiday and uh, Al Horford, the Celtics orchestrated a remarkable comeback that will be etched in basketball lore. Drew Holiday, despite being initially sidelined due to illness and labeled as questionable, emerged as the epitome of clutch performance in Game 3. His unparalleled display in the final quarter showcased nerves of steel as he orchestrated a flawless offensive surge, scoring nine points without missing a single shot. Moreover, his game ceiling steal from Andrew Nemhard in the dying moments not only secured the victory for the Celtics, but also underscored his defensive prowess and ability to thrive under pressure. Alongside Holiday's heroics, the Celtics drew immense strength from the veteran leadership of Al Horford. Horford's historic shooting performance, highlighted by his seven three-pointers, not only fueled Boston's offensive resurgence, but also etched his name in the annals of NBA history. His pivotal contributions, coupled with his invaluable experience, served as a guiding light for the Celtics during their darkest moments on the court. Despite facing adversity, the Celtics showcased unwavering resolve and unity, epitomizing the essence of championship caliber teams. Head coach Joe Mazzulla's strategic acumen and the collective determination of the players propelled Boston to overcome seemingly insurmountable odds. Furthermore, the Celtics' defensive prowess, characterized by timely locks and steals, played a pivotal role in stifling the Pacers' offense and turning the tide of the game in their favor. Looking ahead, the Celtics are poised to capitalize on their momentum and close out the series, aiming to secure their ticket to the NBA Finals. Their resounding victory in Game 3 not only reaffirms their status as contenders, but also underscores their unwavering belief in their ability to overcome any obstacle on their quest for championship glory. As the Celtics gear up for the next chapter in their playoff journey, they carry with them the lessons learned from their triumph over adversity, knowing that their resilience and determination will continue to be their greatest asset on the path. To greatness. All right, so uh, our second game three discussion of today's episode. What? How, how are you feeling about this one? Okay, now this is the game. This series here. This. If you're a Pacers fan, you have to be sick. You have to be sick. Absolutely sick. You look at game one. They should have won game one. This is this is this is one of those theories you look around and you're like we should have had that one. They should have won this one last night. Uh you cannot in in a when you're in an Eastern Conference final with a team that is absolutely the superior team in the Boston Celtics and you look around and you're saying we should be looking at we're up two games to one. And instead, you're down 0-3. That is soul crushing, absolutely soul crushing. Uh, and you look around and you're like, Jason Tatum. Despite everything that they've done, Indiana's played I me mean, a great series. And you look around and you're just like, Jason Tatum has just been more than they can handle. 36 points, 10 rebounds, uh, and eight assists. I mean, it's it's just, man. And then you, you look at the back, you, you know, with Tatum, Tatum and Brown, you're expecting Tatum and Brown to go out. Brown, 20, 24 points. Uh, you know, 
that's expected. But then the big one, this is the big one right here. And that is to look around an Al Horford. That's the one I wasn't expecting. No one was expecting that. 23 points from Al Horford was, I mean, everyone's talking about the old man. But you look around and he was eight for 14 from the field, but the big one was the seven three-pointers. Al Horford nailing the seven three-pointers, that was, that was the game right there. They had an 18-point lead, and the Celtics overcame that 18-point lead to win the game, and it's over. You look at this, you look at this situation, and you look at this series and, and you're looking around and you're say, just saying, what else can we do? We should be, we should be up, but instead of being up, we're down. We're down with, you know, we're, we're down with three games, the three games of zero. Defensively, the Celtics are too much. Offensively, the Celtics are too much. They're getting key key minutes key buckets from 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 their from players they weren't expecting this series this series is just not i mean honestly i, I don't know what else the pacers can do the pacers have played as well as as you know as can be expected there's not much more they can do they're down they're down 03 and if you're a pace if you're an Indiana Pacer right now you're saying we can compete with these guys not only can we compete with these guys we can beat these guys but then you look around and you look at the score and there's they've done everything they can and you look at this I'm looking at this as another situation where a sweep could be in, in play. Uh, you know, you you look around. I don't know. I'm like Andrew Nimmer, huge game. They're doing, you know, Sarah, Sarah, they're doing what they're supposed to do. When you, when you look around, talk about a demoral, demoralizing loss. When you when you've done everything, you're you're up against a a superior team. You've been able to compete against this team. You've had big leads, and then you look around and you're still down 0-3. What do you do? That's even harder. I think that's even harder than where the Timberwolves find themselves because you know I agree with the, you. The Timberwolves have the what if, but the the Pacers have the the, the, we're so close. We were so close, and it's still not enough. But to be that you know, close, they should have won Game One. Indiana should have won Game One, and that's the thing. They should have won last night. Part of winning and making it to the finals is you have to have confidence and you have to have momentum on your side. And. Indiana should have confidence. They've shown they can compete. They should have momentum. They should have had a big game one victory in Boston. They should have won last night. Instead, they don't have any of that. And, you know, when you look around and you, and you say, you're looking, you're looking at the Celtics and you're saying, okay, we can handle if we're up by eight if we're down by 18 no problem we can come back we can overcome that you need a big uh you know big stop you need someone to step up defensively drew holiday just i mean when you need a big stop you need a big defensive play you you're getting it from drew, drew holiday when you need a player that you know, the old man to come up 
<laughs> he's he's six hundred and thirty five and a half years old in basketball, <laughs> and yet he is still able. Al Horford, big three after big three after big three, seven threes. No one had that on their bingo card. No one, no one was expecting Al Horford to come in and give you twenty three big point buckets, but then still be able and, and nail huge threes and that's without Christoph Corzingis and, and right now being up 3-0 there's no reason to rush Christoph Corzingis back they're gonna you know they're gonna have Corzingis ready for the finals it's you start I, I know the series isn't over I know the Minnesota series isn't over but you look around and you're i'm starting to think kyrie irvin versus the celtics in the finals luca versus the celtics it's already starting to write itself i'm i'm already starting to look to the future of the finals what's going to happen in the finals because i look at both of these series i look at them as both being over uh no team has what what was do you remember what the record was about being down oh three um i would have to you, you mean that's what like wild well, guess not, oh. it was a lot <laughs> had anyone ever come back down from oh three i can't even remember it's been very I don't rare think so. it's been incredibly rare if it happens yes it is i mean it's almost impossible you're you're asking a team uh to come back from an almost impossible impossible deficit where no 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 one has ever come back right. from a 3-0 deficit yeah. you know when you look at both of these both of these games and you're seeing you know a, a back quarter where you, you look at Luca and Kyrie, you look at, and, and they're, they, they don't have an answer. And then you look around and you're saying, okay, you got Tatum and Brown, uh, you got Porzingis on his way back, Al Horford's hitting huge shots, Drew, Holl Drew Holl Holiday is, is, is balling out defensively, being able to do what he's done. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of things that can be changed for Indiana. I look around at Indiana, and when you look at this series, when you look at both of these series before, when before the series, I'm like, man, this has been an exciting playoffs. I'm 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 shocked because all the big names are gone. And it's been kind of disappointing. Where is the drama of the, the big comeback? The the upset win? It's just been, you know, you 03, all... 03. And that's what you have there. I think you got all your shocks early. In the <laughs> yes. And, and now it's it's just sort of evened out. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of been... It's been kind of a letdown for me. Mm. I, I mean, even though this has been, ex both of these series have been exciting, they've also been a bit of a letdown. All right, well, we are going to take our next break. When we come back, we'll be switching to college football, more on that uh, $2.8 billion deal and what it might have to do with March Madness. So stay tuned. You're watching the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports, and we will be right back. 